do happens in a social emotional context. This means that right here, right now, in this space, there's an emotional energy, a charge. We can all feel it if we bring our attention to it. This charge is made up of all our individual energies, including our feelings toward and about one another. Let's take a moment to look around at the people with whom we're sharing this time, this space, this energy, this dance. And what does this have to do with dementia? In our everyday lives, not a lot of attention is paid to the social emotional environment. But people with diminishing cognitive abilities are dependent upon this environment to feel safe. In fact, they're quite expert at tuning in to others' feelings. Please note, this is something they excel at. To the extent that they feel judged, ignored, or devalued, they feel emotionally unsafe. Therefore, it behooves those of us who are their caregivers to be more aware of our emotional effect on others. To paraphrase the Beatles, all we need is love. <laughs> we need to create loving, caring environments, and we do that through our nonverbal communication. Nonverbal is defined by what it isn't, that is, not words. But what is it? Through our posture, the way we shape ourselves around others, the way we use the space around us, our rhythms, the way we move, we convey our attitudes. Let's explore some of the ways we express ourselves through movement. Imagine for a moment that you're afraid of the person beside you. How does your posture shift? Now imagine that you're eager to hear what that person has to say. How does it shift now? <laughs> Imagine that you, your life depends on your ability to hold on to your seat. How does your hand shape to the seat? Imagine that you're reaching for something that you really, really want, or maybe not so much. How does that change your use of space? Now imagine that you have no verbal language. Someone offers you something, wants to take you somewhere or do something with you, and maybe you don't understand or you don't want it. How do you convey that? Maybe you, yes, maybe you back away, you turn your head away, you put up a hand. If your attempts to communicate are misunderstood and thought to be symptomatic of dementia rather than communicative, it is likely they'll be disregarded. And then you'll have to make your movements stronger, quicker, more direct. And those will be considered behaviors. Now imagine that you are a frail elderly woman or man confined to a wheelchair. You have dementia and are resigned to a life that's routine. People walk quickly past without seeming to notice you or manipulate your body and you have no idea why. Someone tosses a large red balloon to you, and you smash it with everything in you. That, too, is nonverbal communication, and I see that regularly. This tells me there's an energy inside waiting to be tapped, and I want to tap it. These are resources otherwise lying dormant, unused. My father had dementia and lived in a nursing home, and he said on numerous occasions, you'd think they could have figured out something to do with all the knowledge and life experience we bring. When some people think about dementia, they think almost exclusively about what the person can't do, whether or not they can understand or express themselves verbally, recognize people, know where they are or what time it is, how to take care of themselves. That, of course, is essential to function. But even when a person can no longer function, they remain a person. Dance movement therapy builds on what a person can do. So what are some of the strengths a person with dementia may bring? I've already alluded to emotional sensitivity. In dementia, the internal sensor or judge may no longer work. 
is that good or bad? As with all things, it depends on one's perspective. Some call the lack of sense or disinhibition. The person may no longer be able to do something because someone else wants them to. This lack of sensor may free the person up to be spontaneous, to say or do what they think or feel, to be genuine. Personally, I highly value genuineness. It takes a lot less energy to discern how a person truly feels, and it frees me up to be present. Many people with dementia are unable to access motivation. They need someone, preferably everyone, to provide sufficient sensory stimulation that is culturally and personally relevant to help them connect to their intrinsic motivation. Once that motivation is tapped and they're invited to be present, they can be delightfully playful and present. They can still move and derive great pleasure from moving, but without help they can't access it. Dance movement therapy is about forging a healing relationship where dance and movement are the primary media, just as words are the medium in verbal psychotherapy. The relationship becomes the strongest motivator. Shower them with stimuli, music and props, and then pay attention to how they respond. Are their movements large or small, tapping a toe, blowing a kiss, or refusing to participate? Let them know they're seen, heard, and appreciated and their choice is respected. It is just as important to honor their refusal as any other choice. Incorporating their responses lets them know their contributions matter. When they see their movement reflected back, they recognize that they're having an impact. This empowers them, and they're likely to move and express themselves more. The point is not to get them to do the therapist dance, a waltz, a line dance, or any particular dance, but rather to improvise, to create a new dance, a dance of interaction, one that's never been done before. What happens once the music comes on and the props come out, no one can predict. The benefit, when we are creative and curious, when we experience psychosocial stimuli that are numinous, novel, arousing, surprising, and meaningful, new neural pathways develop. So why does it matter? Why does it matter if anyone dances with someone with dementia? Why should anyone care? We have become far too complacent about care that does not honor our mothers and fathers. The way we treat older adults and people with dementia gives definition to our culture. It reflects our societal values. Our elders, those who have come before and paved the way for us, deserve much better. I see people with advanced dementia warehoused all too often. We pay honor when we dance with them when we relate to them in an embodied way, when we attempt to understand their nonverbal communication. When we dance with them, we invite them to be in their bodies, to savor the sensations and experience of vitality now, in their last days, while they still have bodies. We invite them to be present, to contribute the gifts that only they can bring. Together, we create an authentic dance, one that expresses our feelings and choices in the moment. Together, we move and are moved.